everybody. As you can see today, I am not in the African Queen. I'm actually in my father's motorhome known as the Princess. We're taking her down to Pontiac to get the entire top above the cab rebuilt. Or should I say to rebuild it? We're not gonna get it rebuilt, we're gonna rebuild it. So let's get moving. is still continuing. I haven't obviously quit working on it. I'm going to continue to work on it. I'm trying to get it done as quickly as I can before the weather gets, you know, warm to the point of wanting to go camping. It's very close as it is. Um, but I have multiple projects going at the same time, mostly because I'm kind of dependent on other people. So I have to work around their schedule. And, uh, So I have to work around their schedule and just get things done in bits and pieces instead of focusing on one thing at a time. But my video making, I want to make one video for each project. I don't want to put little bits of each project into a video and then little bits more into the next video. I'd like to be able to do one video, one project. So that's why there haven't been any real uploads happening lately because there simply haven't been any completed projects but all the projects the floor the plumbing the toilet it's all very close to being done as well as another thing I did the other day and that's gonna have its own video so that's why things are weird right now got to be one of the worst freeway interchanges I have ever seen. At the bottom of this ramp you have absolutely no time to merge before you hit the railroad bridge. And this road is absolutely awful. Oh man. Get out of my way, get out of my way, get out of my way, get out of my way. Get out of my way. See that? Look at that. Super busy freeway and it just dumps you on it. Try doing that in a semi. I do that regularly in a semi truck. Good frickin' luck. Dangerous. Okay, so here I am in Pontiac. We are uh, 
going to be working with a family friend named Mike Riley who runs a shop down here and can fix virtually anything. That's him. He waved, but I wasn't pointing the camera. There he is again. <laughs> okay. But you can see what's going on in here. Something leaked, and it basically caused this whole front area to get destroyed. So we've got new fiberglass here to replace the whole front end. We're going to get rid of that front window and just replace all this stuff. <clears throat> and Michael here can do anything with wood, so that's why we bring it to him. Should be an interesting couple days. Already. I sure did. You screwed up one. You sure have, you've did. been oh, working on this for close to three seconds. <laughs> look how look how wet that is, though. Well, what so Mike's that. handing me is just soaking. I mean, yeah, my I mean, hands, this is the, makes the, my the, hands wet. The frame is is literally sawdust. Peachy. through the bottom flies. All right. Because if you do, there's a piece of uh, this stuff right here. It's all that's on the outside. I Goody. I do not want to get into that. Watch for wires as you go, too. Okay. And when you're prying up, you're also prying down. So you don't want to pry down hard. All right. Okay, so we got the this all torn out. What is this here? Oh, nice. Do it again. Oh, yeah. Okay. Alright, so we got all this torn out. This is all completely soaked. And basically... The only structure this has, this is the window frame right here. The top of the window frame is about, it's about right here. And this is just a very thin piece of wood with some fiberglass underneath. And you got the frame here and going around. And that is the only structure it has. That's it. All that weight up front is pushing down this way with very little structure holding it up. So the whole thing is kind of bowing like this. Um, and so we tore out all this stuff. It's all sitting over here. I mean, look look how, how nasty this was. It's just crumbling in my hand. This is what you deal with with the Class C. And this foam is completely soaked. Big bag of it here. We're not entirely 100% sure what we're going to do yet. But... We will figure it out. We always do. Okay, people. You remember how I was complaining about how cheaply the African Queen was built and some of the things that just make you roll your eyes? Well, get a load of this. All right. So you've got metal framework inside the walls that's holding this whole structure up. You got metal framework up there and right there. Now, the only thing holding this down here is this piece of wood that's going across right here. However, look closely. That is a seam. They actually were too freaking lazy to cut a piece of wood that goes from here to here. So they had a piece this size and they filled it in with a little piece this size. And it's the same thing over there. Point out the seam, Michael. 
right there. So you got two pieces of wood put together, not holding up anything. Put this metal piece in there so we can see the bow. Look how much this thing has sunk over the years. Look at that, that's like a half an inch gap. That's how off it is, that's how much it's sagging in the middle because they simply did not put in enough structure. Even without the rot and the wetness, this is not strong enough. I mean, if a 250 pound person is gonna lie up here, this has to be a lot stronger. It's kind of crazy how cheap they built this thing. So we are going to make it better. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're making it up as we go. We'll see what we do. Morning everybody, it is day two here in Pontiac. We are getting, getting started uh, on work. We went and picked up some one by one steel beams that we are going to use to restructure. Let me show you what our plan is. We've got quite a mess going on in here. This is the old styrofoam. The old plywood, what's left of it. But basically our plan is replace this rotted piece with two more pieces, replace this cross beam here. Ugh, trying to do this, can't even, not even tall enough, here we go. Basically we're gonna run steel beams from up here, there's a steel beam here, run them, run beams down, and then carry that load across this way. Because these pieces of wood are all pretty rotted. So we're gonna reinforce this whole thing here here and over there with metal. So it's going to be much stronger than it ever was. This is the seam that runs along the roof. The roof comes here. This is the front of the vehicle right here. And this part comes up. <clears throat> I gotta take off all the caulk off of every one of these screws. See that? Without cutting my finger. I have to do that for every one of these. There's probably about 30 screws going along the top of this thing, and I have to scrape the caulk off of every single one of these. Lucky me. Okay, folks, as you can see, we are making progress. We've got the top here pulled down. There's basically nothing left. It's all rotted out. This is all completely rotted. See all that? This is the kind of job you end up doing if you buy a, a Class C. Not, uh, if you, not if you spend, not if you spend a lot of money and buy one that's in perfect shape, right? Right, exactly, just um, like you did. Right, right. You'll never have these problems. Yes. My, bought, my father spent a lot of money on this RV because he didn't want to do just this exact job. But if you own an RV, you have to either be very handy or have a lot of money. And we're just going to have to kind of make it up as we go. Or stupid friends. Or stupid said. friends, exactly. <laughs> so here's a look at the inside. We took out all the rotted wood. See right here, basically just cut this off. You're right, Gord, it's too much of an angle. Told you. And uh, this is just the fiberglass. And it's just all, it was all wet, all soaking wet. The window's gone. We're actually gonna ha not have a window. We're gonna cover the whole thing with a new piece of fiberglass. No window, as few chances of future leakage as possible. If you decide to buy a Class C, or really any RV, if you go inside and you see any signs of water on the inside, run away. Because you're likely to have a situation like this. The structure will actually rot.
before you see problems on the inside. This thing kind of could see a little bit of water damage on the inside. We never imagined it would be this bad, so take water damage very seriously. All right, folks, this is the old piece of wood that was used for structure on the front. As you can see, it's really rotted because it's pretty much just plywood, cheap piece of crap. So Michael here is going to replace it and replace all of them with, what is this, Michael? Mahogany. Mahogany. Good luck finding a piece of mahogany in an RV. Morning everybody, day three here. Uh, things are definitely not progressing as we had hoped. Very slowly happening because there's a lot to deal with. Uh, yesterday was fairly tedious, mostly just cleaning, scraping, getting all the old adhesive and, and sealant off. And uh, we're hoping to finish up today, or really we have to finish up today because if we don't, we're out of time. And we may have to put it off until week after next or something. my thoughts of the mature one. Okay, so here's what's happening so far. He's installed these new pieces of wood under here to replace the rotten ones. And he's built this metal frame that screws into the wood. And it goes both directions. And the same thing's gonna happen over here. As you can see, he had to replace this piece here because it also rotted. And then there's gonna be another one there, another one there, and another one there. He's already pre-bent this to, to fit. And then a piece of plywood, three quarter inch plywood is gonna be put into this slot here and it's gonna be screwed in and fill in this space here with plywood. And then this piece will be attached from underneath.
right, people, let's get serious here. Time for a bit of a public service announcement. Having experienced what I've experienced here and what I've experienced with the African Queen, I can honestly believe that RV manufacturers are ripping people off. We have had to build this thing, completely redesign the structure because the original structure, the way they designed it, was simply not good enough. They used the bare minimum amount of wood, the cheapest wood they could, the bare minimum amount of sealant, the cheapest screws that they could, and the moment water got in, which it was going to happen, everything rotted. RVs around this size nowadays are running for about $120,000 new. That is insane, considering how cheap the materials are that they use. And it is my contention, Ramblin' Michigander saying, that RV manufacturers are ripping people off. And if there's an RV manufacturer watching this and you think I'm wrong, prove it. folks here's the update we have laid three quarter inch piece of plywood real good strong piece of plywood down it is supported by this metal bar and it, the bar is also connected over here it's hard to see but there's a metal frame running along the along the window here and it goes up and all around so basically you saw us screwing the wood from the outside into this little uh, wood spacer in here that is attached to the metal so this will support a person but the weight will actually be distributed between the walls the front and this wall like that and then also it comes past this side comes past the windshield of the van and is supported along here to give it some some support here now Underneath this metal or this wood deck, we've used two full tubes of marine caulk, and I'll show you why. This ply, this uh, plastic or fiberglass, whatever it is, has to be glued to the underside of that piece of plywood, and so we're using this two by eight and some big clamps to hold it up there while the glue dries.
All right, folks, it's getting pretty late, but as you can see, we're getting very close. We got the new skin on the front. We eliminated the front window to avoid uh, future leakage. You know, windows are just another opportunity for leakage. And right now we're putting on the side trim piece. Let's see if I can get you a better look. This trim piece right here. And uh, what we've used is, see if I can get a tube of it. Nope, all the empty tubes, are, oh, here we go. There we go. This is what we use to seal it up. 3M5200 marine, marine caulk. Very good stuff, but it takes 48 hours for it to even become non-tacky. Sev uh, seven full days for full cure. So even though we got it almost done, we're not gonna be able to drive this thing for a couple of days. Otherwise, all the, uh, all the skin that's glued on is going to come apart. We gotta give it a couple days before we can drive it. Let me show you the inside. Okay, a little bit dark. See, we haven't gotten the interior done yet, but we added these vertical supports where the window used to be, basically just for wind, along with a piece of, uh, piece of wood. All, again, it's all for strength. This thing is completely over-engineered now, but it's going to last years and years. We used lag screws in here to hold the, the plywood in. This thing is now very solid, very sturdy. And with all the caulk we're using, it's gonna be years before it needs any more maintenance. Hopefully it'll never leak again, but I don't wanna say it definitely won't. <sighs> with that, I'm done videoing for today. And uh, once we get this thing completely finished, I will show you the finished product. But that's all for this video. It's going to be probably, it might be a few weeks before we can actually finish everything up uh, because of our schedule. So basically the lesson from this is if you go to buy an RV, specifically a class C, look for water damage inside. If you see any water damage on the inside, you have a real good chance of having to deal with this problem. There was very little uh, visible damage on the inside before we started this project and everything inside was rotten because the plywood inside absorbs wood like a sponge and rots away before the interior wallpaper will be will get wet. Does that make sense? The, the water will leak in, it'll be soaked up by the plywood and you won't even be able to know it's leaking. So be very cautious when you're looking at RVs for sale because if you don't have the skills to fix this, then you're gonna to have to spend a crap load of money having a professional done, and it's gonna be expensive. Okay, Ramble Michigander, signing off.